Bills fans everywhere have a lot to celebrate this year, but perhaps there's nothing that warms the hearts of Bills Mafia more other than the Bills potentially winning a Super Bowl than knowing that while a new stadium is on its way, their long-standing traditions are here to stay. We've learned a lot since publishing our first video on the Buffalo Bills new stadium plans, and the Bills Mafia was sure to let me know what I had right and what I had wrong since that upload in April, which for some reason randomly blew up in October. Anyway, despite the epically low narration quality of that video, we learned that 1. Football culture is completely different in Buffalo than anywhere else in the NFL, and requires a different type of venue and fan experience to match. 2nd. We learned that Bills fans think the Pagulas are pretty chill, and trust their ability to make decisions for the franchise. Other information regarding how the project will be funded, the site plan, and official renderings have also been released. So, let's dive into the Bills' new stadium pre-groundbreaking 2023 update. Let's start where we left off in the location debate. We got a lot of strong reaction from Bills fans on this issue. In most major cities that have NFL teams, having a stadium in the downtown part of the city on paper appears to provide the greatest economic opportunity and utility rather than being located anywhere else. However, Buffalo is not Chicago or Seattle, Las Vegas or Atlanta, but it's also not Indianapolis or Minneapolis. Point being is that Buffalo has a metro population of just a little over a million. It's a very small media market, and certainly not an event town. So while all these other cities build these huge stadiums to attract huge events like conventions, the Super Bowl, or Final Four, Buffalo doesn't host these types of events, nor does its downtown really have the capacity to do so. So while you could try to find ways to make parts of the stadium multi-purpose, a downtown located stadium is likely to sit as vacant as it would anywhere else. And given that Buffalo doesn't have the same infrastructure that event cities do, traffic on game day days would be extremely disruptive to downtown residents and businesses, in addition to being a larger drag on the game day experience, which in Buffalo is huge. Feedback from our first video states pretty much exactly that. The infrastructure in and around Orchard Park is already there to support game day traffic, and fans are used to commuting to the stadium. Bills fans made it clear that they want their game day traditions to stay the same, and the easiest way to do that is by fixing only what's wrong about the current experience and leaving everything else alone which is really only that the team needs a new, modernized stadium to replace its old crumbling one. Fans are quite fine actually with the location and even the design, but I don't think they would complain about having at least some protection from the elements, even if the elements are a significant part of the experience of going to a Buffalo Bills game. So now that everyone's on the same page about where fans wanted a new stadium, let's go ahead and recap the events that unfolded this past year, and that should help explain why things were done the way they were, and how close the Bills really are to breaking ground. In March, the funding plan and location of the 1.4 billion 60,000 seat stadium were announced, making it official that it would be located in Orchard Park across Abbott Road from the current Highmark Stadium, which will be torn down. A targeted opening date of the 2026 NFL season was revealed, and it was announced that the state would own the facility, not the county, who owns Highmark now. Funding for the project breaks down like this. Despite no longer owning the stadium, Erie County will still contribute around $250 million. The NFL will give a $200 million loan to the Bills, which has a specific formula as to how it has to be paid back. The Bills are required under the G4 loan terms to contribute at minimum an equal amount as the NFL, but have pledged to contribute about $350 50 million and are on the hook for any shortfalls in the budget as construction progresses. New York State promised to contribute $600 million, almost half the estimated cost, which was somewhat controversial, but considering how much money flows into New York City with minimal benefit to the rest of the state, I don't see the debate, especially since Buffalo is the city that plays home to the state's only NFL team, who provides millions in income tax revenue to the state every year. At this point, funding from the state still needed approval in the state budget, and after the details were figured out, it was announced that $418 million of the $600 million committed would come from funds seized from the Seneca Nation of New York, a federally recognized Seneca tribe. The money specifically would come from overdue payments that were part of the compact between the state and the Seneca Nation for their operation of three casinos in northwest New York. Bill's chief operating officer, Ron Rakuya, alluded to the Seneca Nation's contribution in an interview later in the year and stated that acknowledging their history with the site will be a part of the new stadium project. 
The next significant development came in July, when the official site plan was released to the public for feedback and to allow for the necessary environmental impact studies. 250 acres of land consisting of current parking lots and athletic fields from the campus of Erie Community College would be used as the site of the new stadium, having no impact on the college's existing structures. The plan showed where exactly the new complex would sit, and in addition to the new stadium, a new 19,000 square foot operations building would be constructed, and the team's existing facilities would be left standing. Also mentioned was that the parking lots and pedestrian walkways on the backside of the stadium created the minimum 100-foot buffer mandated in NFL stadiums after the events of 2001. I haven't been able to find any information yet as to what exactly this requirement is, but looking at other stadiums constructed in the last 20 years, it appears as if there just has to be room for people to evacuate in the case of an emergency. While the environmental studies began getting underway, there were three more huge steps that were having to be completed before construction could begin. 1. The stadium actually needs to be designed, have received feedback from the public, and engineered to acquire the necessary permits. 2. The official agreement between all the parties involved, including negotiations with contractors and all the various construction companies, needs to be finalized and signed. And lastly, the community benefits agreement also needs to be sorted out, which has proven to be the biggest hurdle. In October, renderings of what Populous, the stadium's architect, was planning were released, while limited to only two photos, explanation from COO Rakuya revealed that they were actually quite telling. Starting outside, it had all but been confirmed at this point that the stadium would not have a roof. A lot of that was cost, but since Buffalo is known for its snow games, it appears as if most fans wanted that tradition to continue. One of the biggest factors engineers are trying to diminish with the new stadium is wind. Spectators are fine enduring the cold and the snow, but wind in the stadium makes winter games that much more unbearable. The final exterior finish and shape between the walls and the canopy are still being worked out, but will be designed to decrease the amount of wind that flows into the stadium as much as possible. Fans were also quick to notice the buffalo statues shown in the rendering, and it's unclear at this time what that will actually look like or how big the buffaloes may actually be. Rokuya alluded in an interview that the statues may be part of the land acknowledgement to the Seneca Nation. Moving to the inside, big changes to the layout compared to Highmark will take place. For starters, the stands will consist of stacked seating, which will keep spectators closer to the playing surface, but also in conjunction with the canopy trap crowd noise, making it a much harsher environment to play in. Another significant change is that for the most part, all concourses will be enclosed and climate controlled, and more than that, various sections of seating will come with radiant heat, with an illustration of how this might be laid out shown in red on on the released photo. Also a part of the plan is to have a portion of the stadium be standing room only, raising capacity by as much as another 5,000 spectators. Rakuya has stated that the Bills plan to release more batches of photos on their website as various portions of the stadium are completed in the design process. He also stated that sometime in the spring, the team hopes to have a sales center in place where fans can purchase tickets, seat licenses, and so on and so forth, with the big attraction being that they plan to have a full artificial reality rendering fans can experience before making their purchase, offering views from seats in the stadium but also observing parking and tailgating space. Just as a reminder, take these renderings with a grain of salt. At this point, I really doubt the general shape of the stadium will change, but I wouldn't be surprised if the interior layout changes or if the final product comes off as a simplified version of what we see here. Aside from finalizing the stadium design, officials are still hung up on negotiating the final contract over the stadium. The biggest roadblock right now is the community benefit agreement that must be a part of the stadium deal given the significant public funding. The timeline to complete it has already been extended twice, and so now, officials are racing to put something together by the end of 2022. CBAs are rather ambiguous and could consist of a multitude of things. The main point is to show the public the the value of their tax dollars being spent on the project and how they will benefit the community, or how some of the funds for the stadium can be shifted to directly benefit residents. In some cases, a CBA has been simple as promising that X number of local residents will be guaranteed jobs at the new stadium and during its construction, or the commitment to reserve land from the project for affordable housing. 
Community leaders from groups such as the Partnership for Public Good and the Playfair Coalition have been frustrated with how the process has been handled, saying further that no one representing the broader community has been at the table to discuss a plan meant to benefit the broader community. Representatives of Pagula Sports and Entertainment, the county, and the state have all agreed to a non-disclosure agreement that keeps negotiations behind closed doors. And more than that, no details about developments or what the deal might consist of can be released until all parties have signed the CBA. The Playfair Coalition, a New York group who advocates for community investment, has called for the agreement to consist of at least $500 million to be reinvested back into the community over the course of the expected 30-year life of the stadium. They propose the money go towards grants for affordable housing and businesses in Buffalo, support for health equity and youth mentoring for student and youth athletics, as well as work shuttle access to the new stadium. Erie County legislature chairwoman April Baskin has called that figure a little steep compared to most other CBAs, but voiced that she's been encouraged by the talk so far. Once the CBA is completed and the final deal is signed, shovels are ready to go into the ground, and Rakuya expects groundbreaking to take place as soon as the ground thaws in either March or April. As for other updates, in November, it was announced that a joint venture between Gilbane Building Company and Turner Construction Company in association with 34 Group was selected as the construction management team for the project. They will oversee all aspects of the new stadium's construction. Gilbane and Turner claim on their website that they have been a part of 16 different NFL stadium projects, both new construction and renovations, with Legends Project Development, a sports and entertainment experience planning company, filling out the leader leadership table. Since that announcement, a project information and procurement website has been set up for vendors, suppliers, trade contractors, and professional service companies. Firms interested in participating in the project can share their information with the management team, and info sessions for interested companies will at some point be scheduled as construction gets closer to kicking off. One of the things I'm surprised there hasn't been any discussion about is the stadium's name, mostly because a naming rights deal will significantly discount the amount of money the state will have to put towards the project. I'm sure that an official name or naming rights deal will probably be held back until all the renderings are finished at the earliest, with the most likely case being that the name is announced during the middle of construction. Another aspect I'm curious about is that since the stadium won't be designed to host the Super Bowl or any other specific events besides Bills games, what kind of amenities will be included? For example, Mercedes-Benz Stadium has several features like specific locker rooms and playing surface dimensions that make it more ideal than others to host soccer events, while Lucas Oil Stadium has amenities like large soundproof rooms under the stadium that specifically cater to basketball and marching band events. More than that, both have a significant number of high-end clubs and suites that make both venues suitable for hosting the nation's largest sporting events. So, how many suites can we expect the new Bill Stadium to have? Will it have any clubs or bars? If so, will there be any on field level or just on the concourses? Those are questions I'm sure they're working on answering right now, but those details need to be worked out sooner than later because groundbreaking may be as little as three to four months away. It has been the case with the more recent stadiums, though, that construction begins before final details are worked out, and the architects and contractors are working simultaneously, as was the case most recently with Allegiant Stadium. For now, Bills fans have enough on their plate, and I'm sure between watching Bills primetime games and shoveling snow, they've had little time to follow the stadium's progress during the season. That's what we're here for, and we here at LaBrice TV will continue to watch progress closely.